and talk, talking about talking about uh, being trapped in the cave of your soul. Trapped in the cave of your soul. And I don't I don't have time, guys, tonight uh, to go back over everything I talked about uh, last week. Uh, but I hope you have the notes. And even if you don't have them, you can go on um, uh, YouTube and get them uh, and, and, and see the, and see what um, Sister LaShundra put out there. Uh, and you can get it. Uh, but just in case you don't get it there, if you want me to send you my notes, uh, let me know. And I'll send you a copy of the notes or send you the PowerPoint. Uh, uh, there's been different ones that have asked for it at different times. And so... Um, uh, I don't mind sharing my notes with you, but so because we, we if, if you want it, I want to make sure you have access to it so you can go back and refer to it. But we started this message uh, on trapped in the cave of your soul. Uh, our base scripture is found in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. Uh, we're looking at verses, I think it's 1 through 9, uh, 1 through 9, 1 through 9, and so Last week, we began to see how uh, uh, Elijah had uh, been uh, uh, used by God to rain fire down from heaven and, and, and to even prophesy that rain would come upon the earth and, 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 and different things God had used him to do. Uh, but he killed the prophets of Baal uh, uh, as a result of them uh, thinking that their God was the was the true and God, and, and when uh, uh, Elijah got uh, showed up by fire, then he, he, Elijah killed the prophets of Baal, and so uh, this uh, caused um, uh, Ahab, the king, and his wife Jezebel, uh, more so Jezebel. The Bible said that um, Ahab, uh, Ahab told uh, Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. And this caused Elijah, I mean, Jezebel to get upset. And Jezebel sent a message to Elijah that she was going to kill him because he had killed their prophets. And she was going to make sure that in 24 hours, he too would be dead like those prophets of them. And so uh, uh, the question came of how in the world, how in the world, was this man of God, this prophet of God? How in the world was he being used by God and, and, and operating under the anointing of God? And now, and now was running from uh, Jezebel, running from this spirit. We also mentioned last week that Jezebel is not a female. That spirit is not a female. It, we, we just happened to see an uh, example of it in, in a female in the Bible, but that spirit uh, is a spirit, and spirits don't take on gender. Spirits are operating whoever that will allow them to operate in them. Uh, 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 spirits even went into the swine. Read the Bible. So, so spirits just want a home. Spirits just want a place where they can dwell. And, and those spirits were so strong when they went into the swine that it caused the swines to go into the uh, the, the the river and kill themselves. So, so spirit just want, they just want a body. They just want some flesh to be in. So it has nothing to do with no female. So let's stop that. Jezebel, uh, women's uh, Jezebel. No, 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 men can be Jezebel too. Uh, that spirit uh, like to go up against authority and like to manipulate and attack those that are in authority. So here we see that Jezebel was coming against the man of God who was in spiritual authority. Her husband was in natural authority because he was the king. But this spirit was coming against uh, spiritual authority. So the question is, how in the world did this man of God uh, that just rained fire down from heaven, just been used by God, how in the world was he running uh, uh, from a spirit uh, at this time in his life? And the answer come back is his soul had has come under attack. His soul came under attack. His soul, even though he was a man of God, even though he was a uh, spirit filled, where the spirit would come upon them. Uh, the Holy Ghost had not come yet, but the spirit would come upon them. 
And so he was a man that operated in the spirit, that flowed under the power of God. But now we catch him uh, running, running from uh, Jezebel because his soul had come under attack. And the Bible says that, uh, verse 4, that he ran a whole day and landed in the wilderness, and there he decided to sit under a juniper tree. Now, we got to really take a note at this because if the scripture will point out that uh, he was on a juniper tree, we need to know the significance of the juniper tree. The juniper tree, uh, the significance is that it represented partial seclusion. It was a place of defeat, a place of depression, a place of despair, a place of despondency and desperation. Come on, let's 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 let's, let's, let's look at it. Uh, I have a picture here for those of you that can see my screen. Uh, this picture of the juniper tree uh, is, uh, as you see it, uh, it, it that's, that's partial shade. So 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 you 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 partially uh, under cover, but people can still see you. So that's why I said partial partial seclusion. It's a place. It's a place in our spirit life where uh, we lean to our own understanding. It's a place where we lean to our own rationalizing and our own wisdom. Uh, so Elijah is under the juniper tree, uh, leaning to his own understanding. My Bible says, trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your way. This, this, this would have been a great time for Elijah to cry out to God and to acknowledge him. God, what should I do in this matter? But Elijah allowed his soul, come on, let's talk, his soul, glory to God, to come under attack. And now he operating, he's operating out of his soul, his will, his mind, and his emotion. His emotion has him running. Uh, leaning to his own understanding, leaning to his own rationalizing, leaning to his own wisdom, leaning to his own strategy, leaning to his own way, leaning to his own ideas. I need somebody to say amen right there. So the Bible said that Elijah had came to a place of hopelessness. And please let me tell you, although we are saved, although we are spirit filled, although we are experiencing the glory you can get in low places if you don't stay in command and charge of your soul. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can get in some low places. This man of God who was raining fire down from heaven, who was prophesying and things was coming to pass. But you, my God, can get in places where you get real low and feel like uh, everything is against you. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's get real talk. Let's do real talk. Let's, let's take out the title and take out the column and let's get, let's get going and get real. Uh, Elijah got in a place where he said, read the text. It, he said, it is enough. He said, I can't take no more. Watch this. And he cried out to God to take his life. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This same man that had took the lives of the prophets of Baal, this same man that had rained fire down from heaven. This same man that laid on a dead baby, y'all ain't talking to me, and breathed into the baby, and the child sneezed seven times and woke up. Glory to God. This same man is in a place now where he's telling God to kill me. Woo! It's enough. I can't take no more. And let me tell you something. Your soul can lead you to a place where you want to die as if you have no hope. Oh, somebody said, well, I ain't never been there. I don't think I never do that. Oh, just keep on living and keep on not being in control of your soul and keep on not committing your soul to God and bringing your soul under suggestion and things can happen, situations can occur and you can get in some places where you want to die. And isn't God so merciful that he don't let us die in those places? <laughs> even though we want to die, even though we want to give up, even though we want to quit, even though we wish to die, God don't let us die. Okay, you don't believe this happens. Okay, okay look, look at Psalms. Look at Psalms 55. 
and look at verse number three. Uh, David is talking here. David says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity on me, and in wrath they hate me. He said, my heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors, here it is, of death are falling upon me. I mean, Psalm 55 and 3 through 7. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror have overwhelmed me. But look at verse number 6. I'm talking about wanting to die. He said, and I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. And then verse number 7 says, lo, then would I wander for all and remain in the wilderness. My God, my God. That is where we are. That's where Elijah is. He's in the wilderness. He's in a dry place. He's in a place of partial seclusion. He's in a place where some people are still able to get to him, but some have been shut out. And, th and that's where we get sometimes. We get in places uh, when we're dealing with certain things that, 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 that we'll let some people in, but, we, but, but some people, we don't call them. We don't include them. We don't reach out to them. You know why? Because we don't want to hear what they got to say at that moment because right now I'm soaking and baking and wallowing in my soul. Y'all won't talk to me now. I know I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth on myself. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't call pastors. I don't call Ella Johnson. I don't call Ella Maria. I don't call Ella Bond or Ella McClure. I don't call the prayer intercessors. Why? Because right now, I really don't want to hear. Because they're going to tell me to get up and shake myself off and trust God and get back in place and be all who God called me to be. But so, so, so sometimes we go in partial seclusion. We let people come in and we have conversation with people that's going to tell us what we want to hear. Man, I know I'm preaching good. We talk to people that ain't going to tell you the word. We talk to people that ain't going to pull you up by your bootstrap. Glory to God. That's why you got a pastor. That's why you got elders. That's why you got people that God has assigned to your life. So when you get in these places, they can come in by the anointing of God and pull you up and, and, and tell you, get up from there. Shake yourself off. This ain't where you're supposed to be. This ain't where God called you to be. You're stronger than this. You're better than this. You're anointed than this. Oh, my God. You're built God tough. Y'all don't want to talk to me, but Elijah. Oh, shaman, sika. Yeah, you know, more whole shot. Yeah, he shake him on fire. But Elijah, my God, glory to God. Elijah is in a place, my God, in partial seclusion and asking God, bless God. I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. I'm asking God to let him die. Asking God to kill him. Asking God to commit murder. Y'all won't talk to me now. As if his life is over. Running from one spirit uh, that's used, being used, being operated in one woman. Running from this spirit because he's uh, uh, been attacked in his soul. Y'all hear me? And so the Bible says, the Bible says that Elijah falls asleep. He falls asleep under the juniper tree, <laughs> which is a sign that he needed natural rest. And I need y'all to hear me real good when I walk down through this slide right here. Uh huh. Oftentimes, the evidence of your soul being under attack will show up in your natural body. Did y'all just hear what I said? I said the evidence of your soul being under attack will show up in your natural body. You start having bass under your eyes. You start, man, God, you don't want to eat. Glory to God. You don't want to go nowhere. You want to stay in the house. want to put the, 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 the curtain closed and close the blind and stay in the dark. But the Bible says, the Bible says that in verse 5, the angel, God sent a messenger, an angel commanded him to rise up and eat. In other words, allow your natural body to be ministered to. You need your natural body to be strong so you can fight the war of your soul. Now, y'all ain't, ain't paying me no attention. Y'all ain't paying me no attention. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, you need to rise up and eat both naturally and spiritually. Glory to God. We come to church sometimes and we so uh, down in our soul that the food is on the table. The word is going forth, but we don't rise up and eat. 
<laughs> we don't rise up in Eve. We don't allow our spirit to be ministered to. And so he told Elijah, Elijah, you need to get up. You need to get up and eat and minister to your body. Take care of your body because you got to have natural strength to even fight in the spirit realm. The first thing the enemy want to do is get you down in your body. Glory to God, because a lot of times what's going on in your spirit or in your soul will show up in your body. I'm telling you, it'll show up in your body. It'll show up on your face. It'll, your hair start falling out. Y'all won't talk to me. You start losing weight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the Bible says that the, the, the angel said, Elijah, look, brother, you got to get up and eat. You got to not neglect your natural body. You got to make sure you stay physically strong so you can be alert enough to understand what's going on with yourself. Ooh. But the Bible said, uh, interestingly enough, Elijah 8, we're in verse 6 now, uh, 1 King 19. Elijah 8, watch this, but went back to sleep. I said, God, what's the significance of, of, of this being in the text? You know what God told me? God said, this was a sign of spiritual depression. I said, good God Almighty. He said, when your soul come under attack, sometimes all you want to do is sleep as to block out what you're dealing with. That's what God told me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we are spiritually depressed. Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are spiritually depressed. In, in, in the spirit, we are depressed. We're poor in spirit. We are low in our spirit. We don't want to really pray. We don't really want to fast. We don't really want to study. We don't really want to come to church. We don't really want to read the word. Y'all ain't talking to me now. We're depressed. We're spiritually depressed. I just want to sleep. Maybe if I sleep, it will go away. Maybe if I stay asleep, I'll wake up and magically it'll be gone. <laughs> Woo. So the Bible said, Elijah, he, he ate. <laughs> he ate, but he went back to sleep. Instead of, instead of getting up and, and, and getting back on the mission and getting back in prayer and getting back in worship, y'all ain't talking to me now, and get back on, on, on the mountain and get back in, in, in his flow. Glory to God. The Bible said he went back to sleep. Uh, look, 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 look what God said to me. He said, Elijah was in a low place and he was attempting to try to sleep as a method of escape from what he was facing. Woo! God have mercy. God have mercy. Look, look what God told me. Sleep is supposed to be rest for our body and our mind, not a method of escape to avoid dealing with what your soul is un dealing with your soul being under attack. I said again, sleep is supposed to be rest for your body and your mind. Not a method of escape to avoid dealing with your soul being under attack. The Bible said he give his beloved sleep. Y'all ain't talking to me now. But 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 I wrote it down. Sometimes you may be sleeping, but you're not resting. Sila, Sila, Sila. Think about that. Calmly think about that. Sometimes your eyes are closed and you may be sleeping. But you're not resting. You're not at rest. You, go, you wake up still tired. You wake up, my God, you feel like you've been ran over by a Mack truck. Glory to God. Because you didn't get no rest. You went to sleep, but you didn't get no rest. And so Elijah was in a place where he was sleeping, but he wasn't resting in Jesus. He wasn't resting in peace. He didn't have sleep, a sweet sleep, because he was still on the run from the spirit. Are y'all all right? <laughs> Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost over here on our street. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God is saying, God is saying, sleep supposed to be rest for you. Sleep supposed to rejuvenate you. Sleep supposed to make you feel like you can uh, go another day. Sleep supposed to energize you. Sleep supposed to revive you. Are y'all all right? But the Bible says uh, uh, this man uh, went back to sleep. Glory to God, and, 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 and was in a low place, and he was really trying to escape what he was dealing with. He was trying to get away from it. Maybe if I stay asleep, I won't think about it. 
Maybe if I go to sleep, it won't be on my mind. Maybe if I go to sleep, my God, I won't have to deal with it. I won't have to meet it face to face. Glory to God. The Lord said to me, tell my people that they have been invited to make an exchange in my presence when they need rest for their soul. Woo, I'll tell you again. The Lord said, tell my people, they have been invited to make an exchange in his presence when they need rest for their soul. You need some scripture? I got some for you. Matthew 11 and verse number 28 in the Amplified. It said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Y'all ain't telling me. The scripture already told us, cast your care on him. What are you, what business do you have taking your soul's situations to bed? God ain't never told you to sleep on it. <laughs> God ain't never told you to take it to bed with you. He said, cast your care. Because sometimes if we don't cast our care, it affects our sleep. Y'all won't talk to me now. So he, he said, come unto me. Come unto me. Come in my presence. Come in, in, uh, uh, on the mount of God. Come behind the veil. And let, if you labor or heavy laden, and I, I will give you rest. Not Prozac. Glory to God. Not that medicine that makes you go to sleep. Glory to God. No, no, I will give you rest. Glory to God. Yay. But watch this. Take my yoke, verse 29, upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Watch this. And you shall find rest unto your soul. God is here to me. God is saying the reason our soul are in the situation we in, whatever you're worked up over, on whatever situation, it may not be this, it may not be your children, it may not be your, your marriage, it may not be your finances, but there's something, if you're hearing this word tonight, there's something that's in your soul that should not be worrying you and have you where you can't rest over that thing. You have not cast your care, you have not given it to God, and you have not sold out and believed God to turn it around. Are y'all all right? He said, but tell them uh, they can make an exchange. If they come into my presence, they can exchange it. I give them rest for their soul. I give them my peace. I give them my joy. I give them glory to God, my serenity. I give them my 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 my, my love. Hallelujah. I give them my faith. I give them glory to God, rest for their soul. And let me tell you, let me tell you what I found out in study. It said, "Come unto me, all ye that labor." and are heavy laden. Watch this. Labor is the burdens we put on ourselves. Are y'all hearing me? We put some burdens on our own self. We choose to carry some of this mess, some of this weight. Somebody said this, they don't like me. They don't they, 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 they don't believe I'm saved. They don't believe I'm anointed. They don't believe I'm, uh, I've been called to preach. The devil is a liar. We put these burdens on ourselves, listening to what our soul said. But heavy laden are burdens other people put on us. Woo! I said again, labor is the burden we put on ourselves. But heavy laden is burdens other people put on us. Sometimes we allow, y'all ain't talking to me tonight other people to dump on us. Ooh, and now you can't get uh, in the presence of God and you can't get what you need to get and you can't get in the flow you need to go and you can't receive like you need to receive because you're carrying some junk and some stuff other people said and what they think and how they feel and what they think about you and if they like you or not, who give a care? Long as I am pleasing in the sight of God, long as he's pleased with me, he'll make my very enemy be my footstool. But I got to cast my care. I got to come unto him. I got to give that burden to him. I got to cast that labor and that heavy laden burden on him. I'm not going to let you dump on me. I'm not going to let you put your opinion on me. I'm not going to let you put your thoughts on me, what you think and how you feel. I'm not going to let that steal my joy. I'm not going to let my soul come under attack because I'm caring what you think. Woo! 
Maybe I'm just preaching to myself. <laughs> Maybe I'm just preaching to myself tonight. But he said, tell them that I want to make an exchange. I want, glory to God, I want my people not to allow in this season when I'm pouring out my spirit on all flesh. I want my people not to allow their soul to come under attack because if it come under attack in this season, I feel the prophetic anointing on my life. If it come under attack in this season, it may have the potential to take you out of the game. Woo! 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 Because just as strong as God is moving, the enemy is coming in just as strong. So we got to, we, we, we're getting this word for a reason. So we won't fall and quit and give up and give in to our soul and let our soul drive us under the juniper tree. All right, uh, let's, let's go a little farther. I got a few more minutes. Then the angel came a second time. Woo! And instructs Elijah to arise and eat. Still trying to get him to build himself up both naturally and spiritually. Hear me. All this word we get, all this prophetic utterance we get, all this prophetic dancing we get, it's supposed to be building us up so we won't give in to our soul. So we won't let our soul, glory to God, uh, attack us to the place where we're running in our spirit and not settle in our mind. Y'all all right? Woo! I feel God speaking through me. He said, arise and eat because the journey is going to be long. Somebody said, what journey? Okay, I'll tell you. Elijah was sent 200 miles to Mount Horeb the mount of God, which would take him at least 40 days. Are y'all okay? So 40 days, he was going to be trying to get through the wilderness, wondering, never should have been in the wilderness. Sometimes we are in places we never should have been because our soul has taken us off, that, off course. Our soul has caused us to detour. Our cold soul has called us to exit off the God's highway. Are y'all all right? Woo! So now, so now, Elijah is off course. He's off course. And God wants him to get back to the mountain where he know God, where he uh, uh, experienced God, where he can feel the power of God, where he operates, where God speaks to him, where God prophesies through him. He said, I need you to go 200 miles. You're 200 miles out the way. You're 200 miles off course. Woo! I wonder, I wonder how many miles we are off uh, on, on some things God has commanded us to do. But our soul is operating in that particular thing. It could be a relationship. It could be a marriage. It could be your children. It could be your finance. It could be your health. Where is it that we may be off course and, 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 and now God is trying to send the compass and get us back on course and get us back into that place over that very thing? Are y'all all right? But now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Elijah comes to Mount Horeb. But instead of going on the mount, Lord have mercy, he goes into a cave located near the mount. Lord, have mercy. Do y'all hear me talking tonight? Instead of going up on the mount to the place where he can meet God, to the place where he can be restored, to the place where he can be uh, revived, he, he he's still running. He still, my God, have not caught on to, to, to God uh, wooing him and pulling for him and sending the angels to come. Glory to God. Sending the angels to come. Instead of going up on the mountain, we find Elijah going into the cave. Woo! Woo oh, this is significant. This is a, a significant move, y'all. Because first, Elijah was under a tree in partial seclusion. But now, somebody said, but now, he has moved to a cave which represent total seclusion. He's going down even further in this thing. 
sinking down lower in this thing. Are y'all all right? He's gone from partial seclusion where some people could see him, where some people could get in, but now he's moved to a cave and the cave represents total seclusion. Woo! He has shut everything out and he shut everybody out completely. The enemy of Elijah's soul has driven him into a place of darkness. Watch this. Isolation, limited oxygen, and the home of wild animals as another attempt to kill him and take him out of the game. Are y'all all right? Man, I'm telling you, the thief come not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And let me tell you something God told me just now while I'm talking. God just said to me, the devil is not going to kill you. The devil is going to use your soul and allow you to kill yourself. The devil don't have power to kill you. The devil can't just walk up on you. And when he got ready to attack Job, he had to get permission. He said, I tried to attack the brother, and you got a hedge around him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Woo! He, see, he said, the only way I, I can attack the, the, the head has to be removed. Are y'all all right? So the Bible says, the, the, the Lord just said to me, the devil, the enemy, wish to use your soul for you to kill yourself. Spiritually, spiritually and naturally. I heard the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost just said to me, that's what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. The devil was able to come through the soul of Eve, glory to God, and to get her to start looking at things differently than what God said. Woo! And she died spiritually. Y'all ain't talking to me. Woo! The, 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 your soul can be your own demise. I just heard the Holy Ghost say it. Your own soul can be your own demise if we don't allow God to bring our soul under subjection to the Spirit of God. So, 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 so Elijah, the man of God, the prophet of God, oh, the vessel of God, is in a cave. Glory to God, in total seclusion, willing to be in there with limited oxygen, willing to be in isolation, willing to be in there with wild animals that have made that their home. And he is so low and he is so deep, he willing to stay in a place God never designed for him to be. Woo, God. Ah, what place in your soul that you're living in that God never designed for you to live? What is that thing that has you in a place back in the cave? Glory to God, make you want to quit, make you want to give up and say, what's the use? What is that thing? It may not be this, it may not be the same thing that, that, that I battle with, but there's something that's in your soul tonight that needs to be dealt with lest it tries to take you out of the game. Now watch this. I'm closing. Elijah is not interested in coming out of the cave. Guess what? The Lord told me. And nobody even knows he's in now because he's in total seclusion. At least under the tree, somebody could see him. The devil want to get you by yourself. Y'all ain't hear me. The devil want to get you in seclusion. The devil want to get you out the game. He wants you to feel like nobody care. Nobody love you. You ain't nobody. You're the black sheep of the family. Nobody cares about you. Nobody even uh, uh, wants you. Nobody even want, care to be around you. The devil is a liar, and the truth ain't even in him. Nobody knows he's at, in, in the cave. So he's at the end of a dead end street. The Lord told me that. I wrote it down. He's at the end of a dead end street. <laughs> he's at the end. He can't go no further. He's at the end. Somewhere back in a dark cave. Wet and nasty. My God, no light. <laughs> no word. <laughs> no peace, no joy, no praise, no worship. Are y'all all right? No. In a place 
I'd rather live with the wild animal. I'd rather live in here with limited oxygen because I'm so low on this particular thing that has me running from my place in God. Are y'all all right? I said, are y'all all right? The Lord says to us, I'm closing. Elijah, what are you doing here? Answer, I'm trapped in the cave of my soul. I'm trapped in a place that seemed like I cannot get out of. I have allowed myself to keep regressing and going down on a downward spiral to now I'm trapped in the cave of my soul. I'm trapped in a place where it seems like there's no hope. There's no hope for me. Are y'all all right? Elijah, Elijah, not the devil. Elijah has put himself in this place. We have power over the enemy. We're supposed to resist the devil and he flees. We ain't got no better running from the devil. Elijah has put himself in the cave. Every time you get in the cave of your soul, you put yourself there. Oh, y'all all right? <laughs> I mean, I get too many amens on tonight. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Elijah is trapped in this cave. Elijah is stuck in a low place, a dark place. There's no revelation light. There's no revelation of God coming in. He's not hearing from God. Glory to God. He's not hearing uh, the, 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 the prayers of the righteous. He's in seclusion. Total seclusion has shut everything and everyone out. We're going to stop here tonight and hopefully we'll pick up the next time God allows. Trapped in the cave of your soul. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. I pray somebody been blessed by your word tonight. I pray somebody hear the word. And I hope we don't brush it off, God. I hope we don't uh, uh, ignore it and say, that's not me. I'm doing good. I, I, I'm, I'm straight. But that's, that's that. If, if we're hearing this word tonight, he that have the ear. And I'm here. There's something. There's something that has us in a place we shouldn't be in. There's something that that's driving us the wrong way. There's something that's making us want to cave in and quit. There's something that, that we're about to give up on. There's something that wants to drive us in the cave. God, it's not your will that we be trapped in the cave of our soul. But it's your will that we come unto you, all that laden, labor and heavy laden, and you'll give our soul rest. We can take your yoke and learn of you. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. We give you praise for your word tonight. And I thank you that your word went forth with power and clarity. I do decree that this word found a resting ground. Good ground tonight to rest in. Somebody going to take this word and begin to examine themselves. And you will begin to point to that very thing that has driven them in the cave. And God, I pray tonight that they will come to themselves and hear the word of the Lord. God, we bless you tonight. We thank you. We thank you that it is so. We give you praise for it, the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. May the people of God say, Amen. 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 I pray you were blessed by the word tonight. I pray somebody was blessed by the word tonight. I gave you.